Part One, Section Six of The Age of Reason by Thomas Paine. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The declaratory sentence, which they say was passed upon Adam in case he ate of the apple, was not that thou shalt surely be crucified, but thou shalt surely die, the sentence of death, and not the manner of dying crucifixion therefore or any other particular manner of dying made no part of the sentence that adam was to suffer and consequently even upon their own tactics it could make no part of the sentence that christ was to suffer in the room of adam a fever would have done as well as a cross if there was any occasion for either the sentence of death which they tell us was thus passed upon adam must either have meant dying naturally that is ceasing to live or have meant what these mythologists call damnation and consequently the act of dying on the part of jesus christ must according to their system apply as a prevention to one or other of these two things happening to adam and to us that it does not prevent our dying is evident because we all die and if their accounts of longevity be true men die faster since the crucifixion than before and with respect to the second explanation including with it the natural death of jesus christ as a substitute for the eternal death or damnation of all mankind it is impertinently representing the creator as coming off or revoking the sentence by a pun or a quibble upon the word death that manufacturer of quibbles saint paul if he wrote the books that bear his name has helped this quibble on by making another quibble upon the word adam he makes there be two adams the one who sins in fact and suffers by proxy the other who sins by proxy and suffers in fact a religion thus interlated with quibble subterfuge and pun has a tendency to instruct its professors in the practice of these arts they acquire the habit without being aware of the cause if jesus christ was the being which those mythologists tell us he was and that he came into this world to suffer which is a word they sometimes use instead of to die the only real suffering he could have endured would have been to live his existence here was a state of exilement or transportation from heaven and the way back to his original country was to die in fine everything in this strange system is the reverse of what it pretends to be it is the reverse of truth and i become so tired of examining into its inconsistencies and absurdities that i hasten to the conclusion of it in order to proceed to something better how much or what parts of the books called the new testament were written by the persons whose names they bear is what we can know nothing of neither are we certain in what language they were originally written the matters they now contain may be classed under two beads anecdote and epistolary correspondence the four books already mentioned matthew mark luke and john are altogether anecdotal they relate events after they had taken place they tell what jesus christ did and said and what others did and said to him and in several instances they relate the same event differently revelation is necessarily out of the question with respect to those books not only because of the disagreement of the writers but because revelation cannot be applied to the relating of facts by the person who saw them done nor to the relating or recording of any discourse or conversation by those who heard it the book called the acts of the apostles an anonymous work belongs also to the anecdotal part all the other parts of the new testament except the book of enigmas called the revelations are a collection of letters under the name of epistles 
and the forgery of letters has been such a common practice in the world that the probability is at least equal whether they are genuine or forged one thing however is much less equivocal which is that out of the matters contained in those books together with the assistance of some old stories the church has set up a system of religion very contradictory to the character of the person whose name it bears it has set up a religion of pomp and revenue in pretended imitation of a person whose life was humility and poverty the invention of purgatory and of the releasing of souls therefrom by prayers bought of the church with money the selling of pardons dispensations and indulgences are revenue laws without bearing that name or carrying that appearance but the case nevertheless is that those things derive their origin from the paroxysm of the crucifixion and the theory deduced therefrom which was that one person could stand in the place of another and could perform meritorious service for him the probability therefore is that the whole theory or doctrine of what is called the redemption which is said to have been accomplished by the act of one person in the room of another was originally fabricated on purpose to bring forward and build all those secondary and pecuniary redemptions upon and that the passages in the books upon which the idea or theory of redemption is built have been manufactured and fabricated for that purpose why are we to give this church credit when she tells us that those books are genuine in every part any more than we give her credit for everything else she has told us or for the miracles she says she had performed that she could fabricate writings is certain because she could write and the composition of the writings in question is that of the kind that anybody might do it and that she did fabricate them is not more inconsistent with probability than that she could tell us as she has done that she could and did work miracles since then no external evidence can at this long distance of time be produced to prove whether the church fabricated the doctrines called redemption or not for such evidence whether for or against would be subject to the same suspicion of being fabricated the case can only be referred to the internal evidence which the thing carries within itself and this affords a very strong presumption of its being a fabrication for the internal evidence is that the theory or doctrine of redemption has for its base an idea of pecuniary justice and not that of moral justice if i owe a person money and cannot pay him and he threatens to put me in prison another person can take the debt upon himself and pay it for me but if i have committed a crime every circumstance of the case is changed moral justice cannot take the innocent for the guilty even if the innocent would offer itself to suppose justice to do this is to destroy the principle of its existence which is the thing itself it is then no longer justice it is indiscriminate revenge this single reflection will show that the doctrine of redemption is founded on a mere pecuniary idea corresponding to that of a debt which another person might pay and as this pecuniary idea corresponds again with the system of second redemption obtained through the means of money given to the church for pardons the probability is that the same persons fabricated both the one and the other of those theories and that in truth there is no such thing as redemption that it is fabulous and that man stands in the same relative condition with his maker as he ever did stand since man existed and that it is his greatest consolation to think so end of part one section six